Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the subject of my talk is uh, on the modeling of microstructure, uh, microstructured modeling, uh, uh, and in special case uh, with application to salt caverns. Salt caverns uh, are uh, uh, are uh, large underground uh, cavity inside. Uh, inside a uh, salt formation uh, that uh, are uh, built artificially uh, to store uh, some uh, important uh, product like uh, hydrocarbons, uh, uh, natural gas uh, or uh, for store uh, some uh, wastes that come from uh, uh, industry uh, or uh, uh, I don't know, uh, waste uh, like um, radioactive, radioactive waste. In the picture uh, uh, on the left, uh, you can see these uh, caverns that um, are built in a, a vertical uh, formation in salt, uh, but uh, we can have even uh, uh, formation of salt uh, very long, uh, like a belt, uh, and so obviously we have a different uh, uh, behavior of these uh, caverns. So, uh, what is done when a, 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 a salt formation is discovered uh, is to uh, produce a, a, a cavern with the process of solution mining that uh, consists in a, uh, drilling uh, the soil and pump in uh, a fresh water that can dissolve the salt and then we can create a, an open space inside the soil. Then uh, pumping out uh, what remains, that is a brine, a solution of water and salt, uh, we can uh, have a, a volume that can uh, be used uh, to uh, store some relevant product. So, uh, this kind of technology is uh, uh, with low cost, uh, very flexible, and uh, uh, with rapid creation. So, it's uh, very uh, attractive from this point of view. Then, uh, we have to consider that the salt has a, a very low permeability, so it's very uh, useful for storage purpose. And from a geological point of view, uh, the salt formation is uh, uh, very inactive. Uh, so, uh, especially for radioactive uh, waste, uh, can be very useful. And uh, uh, then uh, we can uh, even consider mm, the uh, relevant uh, aspect uh, that when uh, a vertical formation of salt uh, uh, is produced in the geological uh, phenomena, we can have uh, near this formation a stratigraphic trap in which uh, we can find uh, natural gases or uh, uh, oil, so it's uh, a very uh, useful, a very attractive uh, um, topic. So uh, I want uh, in this talk to present uh, a model, uh, a microstructured model, uh, to uh, forecast the behavior of such kind of, uh, of material, and then uh, we uh, want to. Uh, model this uh, uh, salt bio behavior like a uh, porous material filled with uh, uh, water or better with brine uh, that is uh, the solution of water and salt. So in this case uh, we uh, assume the solid as elastic and the fluid as a, a second gradient fluid uh, like uh, uh, modeled by Cam Hilliard. And then we consider even the case in which we have a press stress in the, in the bulk. So, uh, first of all, we have to declare what, is, what are uh, our kinematical descriptors, and uh, these are uh, the usual displacement to, uh, to consider the, the back 
um, behavior of the material and then uh, we consider uh, as a descriptor of the microstructure a simple scalar zeta that is the change of porosity so zeta is uh, the difference between the porosity in the actual configuration minus the porosity in the reference config uh, configuration all done in a reference uh, frame, in a Lagrangian frame so with the usual uh, uh, assumption for the strain tensor G that can be considered uh, like a, a sum of the strain tensor uh, the small strain tensor uh, and a quadratic part in the gradient of U that I called H we can uh, assume an energy for the, this material that depend on G, the strain tensor, zeta and the gradient of zeta. So the porosity and the gradient of, of the uh, porosity. And uh, we consider uh, a very uh, general case uh, in which the energy have a, a quadratic uh, uh, form. And uh, we consider the case in which uh, uh, the deformation can be assumed small. So we can uh, uh, consider instead of the green sun uh, tensor, simply the small st uh, strain tensor uh, E. Obviously, to complete and define uh, our energy, we have to uh, uh, define the uh, material that compare in the energy we uh, postulate. Uh, so, uh, for, the bulk, for the bulk material CSS, we consider the assumption of the isotropic material. So, we have to define uh, two uh, parameters, uh, lambda and mi, lame parameters, that are considered for the, the salt and for the given state of pre-stress. Then, uh, for the um, microporosity, uh, we consider uh, CFF that, is, uh, a, uh, that can be modeled uh, simply with uh, a scalar coefficient m and can be interpreted as uh, a compressibility coefficient, that is uh, the energy stored in the fluid. And, uh, uh, we can uh, model uh, the interaction between the macro and the micro structure in uh, a spherical way uh, like uh, a classical BO model. In fact, uh, alpha B and M are uh, two coefficients of BO. Then, what is new respect uh, a classical uh, BO model, we consider uh, a term um, in the uh, gradient of zeta uh, and uh, with the other assumption, even this is uh, uh, isotropic, so as a, a, um, a spherical uh, form. And in a similar way, we consider um, the pre-stress as a spherical. So, uh, finally, we can write uh, our energy in this way, in which we can uh, uh, consider very easily uh, the two terms that are linear in E, uh, the strain tensor, uh, in, and in zeta, that are related to the uh, pre-stress, the usual uh, uh, term uh, quadratic for the bulk uh, material, then the quadratic term for uh, the uh, microstructure, the coupling term that uh, is related to the trace of E, and the term related to the gradient of zeta. That term uh, is uh, um, the particular one that make the fluid of canilier type. So, uh, 
I want now to observe that uh, in, in the energy we consider a, a very simple model uh, to uh, model the uh, energy stored in the fluid part, but uh, when there is a, a very high pressure, maybe we can consider a more complicated model in fact, uh, the classical equation to model um, the state comportment of um, behavior of the water or uh, uh, aqueous solution uh, is this equation due to uh, tight, in which we can observe the relationship between the pressure inside the fluid and the variation volume of the fluid that is an exponential um, function. So this, uh, this uh, equation is uh, good to uh, consider uh, fluid that are uh, near incompressible, like liquid. Uh, even in, in our case, obviously, we have liquid in, in, in the salt uh, matrix. So, with this assumption, we can write uh, the, um, the term of energy in this form. Obviously, the derivative of this uh, uh, part of energy respect to zeta must be equal to the pressure the type pressure that we see uh, before, and uh, I here in this plot uh, compare the energy, the quadratic energy and uh, the tight energy, and you can see that are effectively very different, but uh, if we are in a situation in which the the change of porosity is very low, uh, we can, uh, um, without uh, uh, loss of uh, generality, uh, consider this simple model. Obviously, if uh, we have a, a very um, high change of porosity, uh, we can uh, switch on this uh, uh, term and consider a more complicated energy. So, we can write the governing equation of our system, and you can uh, recognize on the left side the variation of the internal energy, and on the right side the variation of the external work done by the two actions, tau s and tau f, that are uh, tau s, uh, the uh, usual force per unit area acting uh, on u and tau f is the action that uh, acts directly on zeta, the change of, uh, of porosity, and is um, responsible of the interaction between neighboring pores and uh, some uh, boundary phenomena like capillarity uh, phenomena. In fact, if uh, we uh, uh, perform an integration by part of this one, uh, we can uh, find very easily the strong formulation of that one, and uh, we can see the governing equation and the boundary condition, and you can see that uh, the uh, usual uh, uh, pressure, that uh, the usual force per unit area uh, that act on the boundary of the bulk material is uh, related to the, to the uh, classical stress, the uh, stress related to the uh, microstructure part and the press stress, and uh, we have this uh, uh, external action that is related to the gradient of zeta. So, uh, if uh, in the uh, energy, in the expression of energy, we cannot consider uh, this term, uh, our uh, system, our, our material is not uh, able to sustain this external action. So, uh, if uh, we won't consider this kind of phenomena, we have to consider this term in the energy and so in our model. So, now I show you some numerical uh, simulation um, on uh, uh, two cases, a case of uh, uh, 
salt dome, so a vertical structure in which the pressure in the left side and the right side is very low respect to the pressure on the top and on the bottom of our sample. Here there is the cavity of the cavern uh, in which we have another uh, different pressure, P1. Um, this assumption is related to the fact that uh, the pressure P3 is uh, uh, very less respect to P2 uh, because if we have a, a, a trap in which I don't know, we have uh, uh, natural gas, the pressure here is very low respect uh, this uh, uh, edge. Instead, in this case, uh, uh, we have a, a belt uh, of salt, so a very long strip of salt, and then we consider as a boundary condition here and here a periodic one in which the displacement of the left side is equal to the displacement of the right side. Uh, then we compare the subcases uh, sub in which uh, we does not consider tau f on the uh, internal boundary of the uh, cavity and in which we consider uh, that external uh, action. Uh, in particular, uh, in uh, our simulation, we fix the pressure inside the cavity and change uh, the uh, pressure outside. So, in this picture, for example, we have in the case of South Dome, here and here the pressure is very low and so there is a dilatation in this uh, direction. Um, here we have the same pressure inside the cavity for all the uh, simulation and an increasing uh, pressure here, here uh, from this case, then here we have the same pressure inside and outside, here we have a pressure uh, uh, outside greater than inside, and here a uh, more greater pressure uh, outside respect to inside. And uh, what is uh, um, interesting is in this case uh, when the pressure is greater outside than inside, uh, we put the trace of V, uh, so uh, 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 indices of the dilatancy or compactness of our sample, we can see uh, all these um, yes, uh, all these numbers are positive, so we have a dilatation uh, everywhere in this uh, sample um, even this, this pressure is greater than that one. And same consideration can be done if we see what happens to the, um, the zeta, the change of porosity. Here we can see that the change of porosity is positive in all the uh, domain, so we have a dilatation. Uh, this strange effect can be uh, explained by the fact that we consider a press stress and so until this uh, uh, threshold value of the uh, pressure we have a compensation of the press stress. Then if we increase um, uh, beyond this threshold the pressure uh, we have uh, instead of dilatation a, a compactation of our sample. Then I want to show you the effect of the action tau f on my sample and uh, uh, you can see a, a very uh, an effect that uh, is localized uh, near the internal wall of the cavern and uh, you can see even that when the pressure outside of uh, uh, the, uh, the sample uh, increase, uh, this effect becomes less important. Uh, obviously, the same is uh, uh, not for the uh, one we uh, see the porosity, uh, because this action uh, acts directly on porosity. So uh, we have this uh, localized phenomena in, uh, in all uh, the, the cases we explore. And then, 
Uh, another thing, um, even in this case, uh, uh, we can see a dilatancy effect uh, uh, that is uh, unusual uh, uh, from a, a, an intuition uh, point of view. Then, the last case I want to show you is the, uh, the case of uh, the salt belt case, and you can see a very similar behavior in this case, even if uh, the uh, effect of compensation of the press stress in this case uh, is uh, less uh, evident. In fact, uh, here we have the uh, the blue and uh, green zone that uh, show a, a compactness and the red and orange zone that show a, a, a dilatancy of the sample. So we have a mixed effect, even if, uh, in, uh, if we see the change of porosity, uh, we see even in this case uh, a dilatancy. Okay, a similar behavior we can see even in this case uh, for, the, uh, for the action tau, uh, tau f, uh, for the trace before and for the uh, change of porosity here. So, what uh, we see in this uh, uh, very brief uh, talk uh, is uh, what happens when we change the uh, porosity outside uh, uh, our cavern, our sample in which there is a cavity, and uh, we, mm, we compute uh, all these, uh, mm, uh, these cases uh, to show you uh, the behavior, in particular the, the, the F, the results more evident uh, is uh, due to the press stress uh, in, uh, that we have considered in our sample and uh, uh, I want to uh, highlight even that uh, all uh, uh, our simulations are related to a small change of uh, uh, deformation and a small change of porosity, uh, but we can uh, easily uh, improve and change our model uh, considering uh, uh, large deformation uh, if we consider simply G instead of E like tensor of strain and we can uh, consider instead of uh, um, the simple quadratic term for the microstructure uh, zeta uh, the term of uh, related to the Tate equation uh, to uh, consider a change, uh, a high change of porosity. So these uh, are my main references and that's all. Thank you. I want to comment that uh, some 10 years ago it seemed that in Sicily, Italy wanted to use uh, this technology for buying uh, gas from North Africa and in, in summertime, and then use it in wintertime. But then uh, this is about the latency that we exchanged with some of these companies, and they were very worried about this effect. Because you increase the pressure and some pores are open, and this is very dangerous. Then in the United States, some big uh, uh, salt caverns exploded with catastrophic effects. So nobody is thinking anymore to use it, even if there are some salt caverns full of nuclear waste. So it could be. The paper uh, presented by Luca was motivated by earthquake effect on, on this. So this was for giving you a frame why the group was interested in this. I don't know if you found stuff in this. No, not talking at all. Uh, the people who are on this subject, and why the important thing is the time they come in and the behavior of the research. And in particular, in, you know, this is called 
Vision Creek. And uh, I'm quite surprised that I found this application and I joined the contest of the city. So I think that's a very important, challenging step for me uh, to extend this to this whole plastic. But, but you agree that this calling that you can have dilatancy within the yes, of confinement. Uh, what was the, the discovery of yeah, I mean, the this could be frightening in a sense. <coughs>
how valid is the nonlinear code. This is another story. But from the conceptual point of view, you have the tools for doing this. So you can start from an isotropic, render it non-isotropic because of loads, and then to study wave propagation. Um, I think that they are so intrinsically Lagrangian that they think this is obvious. Uh, I, I think this is uh, very important. And when you have large deformation measures, you are not afraid of anything. Some other questions or remarks on uh, possible collaboration between the uh, French team and the uh, Italian team? Uh, this we will discuss somehow. Yeah, maybe we can begin <laughs> doing that. Uh, I have a, a question or a remark uh, for um, the, the modeling you, you propose. It's more phenomenological uh, modeling with uh, constitutive low potential. And uh, maybe in, uh, in GDR uh, team we are more uh, focused on the, not only on the DM simulation, for instance, you know, to, to try to you wait for more. <laughs> we are ready for more. Yeah, we see, but uh, maybe, maybe uh, 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 try to identify maybe some, uh, you know, condition of the constitutive law from the simulation on the, on the, on the scale. The problem is that Nico Marco identification is... Okay, maybe something which uh, Ivan did not stress enough is that if you don't have second gradient terms in the energy, all these boundary effects are invisible. Okay? So we wanted to prove that these boundary effects which are observed can be modeled with higher gradient models. Now, now, the big problem, I know that you are there, you know, for turning the knife in the pleasure. And <laughs> not always what it's called. Nobody knows how to do in a correct way micro macro identification in second grade material. Uh, there was a discussion between Sapper Forest and he was present. Uh, Pierce Pesher, Claude Boutin, and who knows? Who know these three people uh, can imagine what happened. The session was stopped and we spoke two hours about this. Periodicity boundary conditions are not good. You need to consider a cluster of cells. I mean, uh, this is a terrible topic. But in my group, we are thinking to use a automata, which resembles very much uh, molecular dynamics. Okay, we are from, from this particular class of material I need to start. Uh, it is a polycrystalline material. This is made, means that, in fact, physically, the main part of the deformation is due to sliding on a uh, few systems. I think about the three or six systems. Uh, and I think that is not exactly what we can we can find this. Well, yes, it's not exactly what we can find in granular system because in this granular system you can consider plastic mechanism due to the This is an aspect. Moreover, there is fracture. I mean, there is uh, prolonging around this carbon and fluid is entering inside, causing a phenomenon very similar. This is the reason for which I asked to the other speaker if the number of cracks was changing in this model. Here it is changing. So in a sense, we have a very rough continuum model waiting for a paper like that by our friend uh, Professor Kondo uh, for concrete. Because I was inspired uh, something like 20 years ago by his micro micro identification process, but I never managed to prove exactly that our continuum model uh, is the limit of this. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can be only happy. I'm talking about this, this question is very important because what we want to do is to, to try to. Establish a, a general continuum material coming from macro-dialysis. If, if you manage to do this, you uh, make money macro modeling useful. So I cannot be more than, uh, I can only be happy of. of yeah, so, so to answer the question, the uh, room of uh, possibility of collaboration, because uh, you see that in this uh, 
So a way that the, the room is uh, here to, to find a, um, to have a collaboration in which you, you use the micro the micro-mechanical model to identify the parameters and work in the simulation in this uh, in the in the macro level that are uh, easier and by the way, the collaboration of my group with Anil Mistra is in a smaller scale what we can try with your bigger group because he is a micro macro man. Okay? So he is working with uh, grains and looking for identification. The interest of the numerical simulation is that you can introduce even non physical uh, forces, you know. In Experimentally, maybe it doesn't exist or it's very difficult to be measured. Oh, no. But in a local point of view, you, you can introduce some local couples uh, just in a uh, 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 last warning in a delirium of omnipotence. I said, Ivan, you do this micro marker identification and in it at 12 days for doing one simulation. Maybe you can tell me that you are better than us. No, we do it in two days. Not me personally, but we have got some colleagues. Uh, okay, but well, what I mean, heavy computing can be yeah. sometimes very difficult. Okay, you will tell me what you are doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But after the Greta order from Marco Echazis. Boom. But after Daria is telling you what we are doing, because we 